Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So guys, I have Caitlin Johnston live right now. Um, I'm gonna introduce her in a moment. I'm doing a systems check. I always do a systems check first to make sure that this stuff works the way it's supposed to, because I'll be absolutely pissed if I do an entire video <laughs> and it comes back weird. Um, my wife is supposed to be my IT checker. Babe. Okay, she's giving me the okay. Uh, awesome. <laughs> How you doing, Caitlin? Please tell everybody hello. Hello, Jamal. How are you going? I am doing all right. Um, so thanks for you having me. Thank you're welcome. I, I was glad to have you. I you a piece, there was a piece you wrote about Hi, John McCain, and that piece was the thing that was like, that's an interesting perspective. Now, <laughs> I, I, my first thought was like, holy shit, that's brutal. Then my second thought was, well, yeah, but is it true? But is it true? And first thing, before we go to that, I, I did say I was going to take two questions on this. Yeah. You wrote a piece having to do with the left and the right coming together. In fact, you wrote a lot of pieces saying that the right and the left should come together on the issues to which they agree. I've also have done many videos on that, which was another reason why I wanted you on the show. In one of your videos, you pull the name out of a hat of somebody who by all measure, at least based upon my own value system, is pretty a disgusting human being. Yeah. But you would agree that he wasn't really the point of your article, right? I mean, what was, what was the reason for using, first, what was the article? What was the point behind the article? And what was the point you were trying to make? The point I was trying to make was that uh, we're cutting our noses off to spite ourselves. If we don't use various kind of right-wing uh, media sources when they're actually speaking the truth, when they're pointing out things that, that, that in, uh, interest us and are in our interest, um, that it's stupid to not retweet them and give them, you know, the energy. I'm all about smashing the media uh, and, and getting rid of the false narratives. Um, which is why I love guys like you who, you know, who are actually taking over the, the media, like, and becoming sources right. of news. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, I, and, and, yeah. It's, and it's a, it's a tough gig, but, you know, grokking what's going on and then and sending it out, you know, as, as you see it as truth is a really important job. And, uh, and I don't think we should leave it up to the mainstream media because money is just poisoning it and um, it's creating this situation where, you know, Americans are like being suffocated to death by the uh, Walmart welfare culture and, uh, you know, destroying countries overseas, like with the neoconservative. Yeah. Um, and that's their only I building. Found... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're fine. I feel, you're fine. Finish no, your point. I mean, all, all I can tell is mainstream media is building consent for that. And so I'm, I'm all about smashing those narratives and, and, you know, throwing shade on it as well. Like, you know, when they wheel out someone like Banner Alabed, um, then, you know, I want everyone on that, everyone, every human who, who wants, who feels like that this is important needs to start pushing that regardless of where they sit on the political spectrum. So that was, that was the overall, that was just the point of the article. Senevich, right, yeah? Was that your understanding of it? Yeah, that was my understanding of it. I, I read the article and I said to myself, She's saying that she wants the left and the right to agree on the things they agree. That's what I took. It's not, I didn't take it as um, you're supposed to join hands with people that you dislike. I, I kind of made this point. Donald Trump put a bullet into the TPP. Good. I'm glad Donald Trump put a bullet into the TPP. When Donald Trump did that, I came out and say, fucking awesome job, Donald Trump, for putting a bullet in the TPP. When yeah. Donald Trump tried to ban Muslims from the country, I said, Donald Trump is a fucking asshole for trying to ban Muslims in the country. Right. You can look at an issue. You can look at a specific issue. It's just saying on the things to which I agree with you on, yeah. And the point that you even made in the article had to do with warmongering. Like it was literally, I posted something about U.S. warmongering. This was the first guy who says something about it. Hey, we can join hands with people on the things to which we agree. That's literally the way I took it. That's literally how I took it. I'm sorry. I'm slightly taking over the interview because I'm slightly annoyed by it. I saw that to myself and I said, this is absolute minutia of all the things that we could talk about. She's making a point, and you're completely bypassing her point based upon the style of the way she made her point. So yeah, well, it was yeah, it was disingenuous the way that, that it was extracted, and and this was kind of like a telephone um, call sort of thing. It 
it started with someone who had a deep grievance about me that had nothing to do with that. And then this rolls on and rolls on until it becomes this, Kayla Johnston is a secret supporter of white supremacists. Um, like, I don't know how we got there. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it went from she named somebody in her article, and because she named this guy in her article, the point of the article doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. She named the guy in her article, so she somehow is racist and pushing white supremacists. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I'm not just pushing white supremacy that, um, you know, they try – that, like it must be because I keep saying, no, I'm not, that they're, they're saying that I'm secretly pushing it, <laughs> like that I'm some sort of like internal saboteur, which, you know, which means that you would have to, if you were intellectually honest enough to, to make that call, and, you know, all right, maybe I am, like you would have to go <laughs> I mean, white nationalism is exactly the opposite of what I'm about. and I know, so, I know, this is the wild part. It's the yeah. left. I mean, it's like. You're functioning with people on the left. It's like either you believe that the people on the left are all secret racists and anything that they say for the most part is harboring some kind of racism behind the scenes. Right. Or those people are just making a point. And you're looking at it from your very specific context based on race. Everybody's not looking at it from yeah. that same context. You're not looking at it from that same context. And that's how we collaborate with each other too is that we get, you know, we allow each other to tell our perspective from things, you know. And if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go through my perspective on Cernovich. Go for it. Go for it. I want you to. Explain it. I, look, I looked up some of the content he said. The guy, I have to be honest, the guy is horrible. I, I'll yeah. put it this way. Of all the people to pull out of a hat, it wouldn't have been Cernovich. That's all I'm saying. Right. And you've also kind of made the point, you go to the degree that you yourself feel comfortable with. I have to be honest. I can't necessarily think of anything Cernovich will me be on stage, if you push something out that I read and thought to myself, oh, right, this is accurate. This is actually true. Am I going to just close my eyes to the information? No. Like, I, I guess that's a good as you work to the degree that you work with the person. That's all. No. Yeah. Well, explain yeah, point of view on yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Here's the thing. My perspective, you know, like, I have this ongoing um, battle with David Brock in my mind. He is my arch nemesis, right? And I never let David Brock tell me what to think, ever. You know, there, there are people who I trust um, to adjust my perception about things, but he is not one of them. Um, and when he came out with the, uh, like, with Media Matters and stuff, and they tried to smear everyone, everyone who was, like, to the right of Hillary Clinton, um, with this idea that they were all this alt-right and then they, they created this umbrella um, that people have been happily calling themselves and not thinking of themselves as this thing. They ca called them all racist, Nazis, fascists, etc. And I was like, I've heard this before. I've seen this strategy before. They tried to do this with Black Lives Matter. They tried to say that all Black Lives Matter people were terrorists. And I, you know, I didn't buy it then. They, they tried to say all Muslims are terrorists or whatever. I'm not buying it then. So I kind of did my little David Attenborough number, like I went exploring. I just went around the media landscape and just observed what was going on um, to find out who the really nasty assholes are and who are the actual, you know, anti-establishment people who might have, like, you know, some bizarre kind of views on, on all sorts of other things but, uh, but are basically looking at the deep state. They're looking at the square at the problem. They might have totally fucked up ideas about strategy or um, who's to blame about all of this or whatever. Well, no, not who's to blame, but they know they, they know that distinctly that there is a machination going on behind the American electoral system because, that is in power. Um, and because the the right, you know, it's the Trumpsters anyway, uh, like everything from burners who just could not get on with the Hillary train and for whatever reason couldn't get on with the Greens or whatever. Um, right through to actual Nazi fascist assholes like poison, right. total poison. Um, and so they've, David Brock did a really good job of saying, see those nasty bastards, they're all the same thing. Mm, I see what you mean. No, yeah, I right. Yeah, and now, now 
Is Cernovich one of those nasty assholes? I actually don't think so, right? Now, and this will take some time. So if you... And, and go it's for only it. No, no, go for it. I, I'm, I'm skeptical based upon the things that I've heard, but go for it. I, right. Look, I think people are going to have some like, extreme I, I, views I, I, on one point and still agree with you on other stuff, if that makes sense. Like, there will be people yeah. who I think are absolutely horrible people who would agree with me on something. I, I give you an example. I, I had a friend. Well, he wasn't a friend. But I've gotten into these debates with people who yeah. are way to the right, like way, way, way to the right, would disagree with me completely on all sorts of stuff, but end up agreeing with me on one or two very specific things. It's it's just it's the way people are. I, I don't necessarily think it's crazy, but but blow my mind about Cernovich. I, I have certain ideas about him. I think other people do too. So go for it. Make your case. I'm not sure I'll blow your mind, but I I'll just <laughs> I'll just step out what my observations are of him. Like he is being uplifted by the kind of regular Trumpsters who aren't racist. They're not particular. I mean, they're all sexist. <laughs> like. <laughs> And, you know, yeah. look, basically, like, when you move to the right, I can understand, you know, capitalism in itself is the white male patriarchy at work. Like, you have, if, even if you're going to believe in libertarianism and stuff like that and this level playing field idea, this mythical land with a level playing field where everyone just starts off on an equal footing, uh, which denies slavery, denies every, you know, the... Yeah. the, the hundreds of years, thousands of years of inequality that have built up to this point. Um, so I get that, right? I totally get that. Um, but these guys at least don't think of themselves as racist and they don't think of themselves as sexist. They think, I, but they're naughty, naughty boys. Like they're culturally very naughty. Uh, and they love saying things, they love trolling. They love surfing the outrage culture. And Mike Cernovich, like, he built his career on that. He even wrote a book about it, like, how to surf the outrage culture. And so it's actually, he's very open that he made these outrageous fucking statements, outrageous, got a lot of eyes on him and has used that to elevate his, um, his persona. So you're For saying he's a bomb thrower, that it's not... It's not that he means those things. It's for the most part he's trying to get attention. That's the way you're taking it. And that his ideas, underlying those ideas, are things that people can work with. That's your point. I think that's the point. Yeah, he's like guys. Lady Gaga. You know, he got out there in the meat dress and everyone went, wow, that's wrong. And and he got everyone's attention. But since then he has, he's definitely kind of, you know, you'll see in his Twitter now, there's really nothing you can point at. It's, I, it's, I would. Things from the, no, I understand. The you're, you're, yeah, I feel you. I understand what you're saying. He's he's a bomb thrower. He's he's trying to get it to just like a new Ann Coulter. And that's right. It. right. Yeah. 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 And that's. I mean, I'm not saying that that's a great way of being, or that, that those pernicious statements, those poisonous statements, you know, and the effect that they have of galvanizing people's disgusting hatred into like. I'm not saying that's 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 a good thing at all. Like. Um, and it's certainly not anything I would do. <laughs> like, but, you know, that's what I see. I see this guy who's who's kind of clever about the media, um, but he's also clever about other things. Um, and he, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's certainly not, uh, he's, he's no white nationalist and he's no white supremacist anyway. He doesn't believe in a white white nation state at all. That's like, fair. That's fair. I, and look, to, to, well, however people see that, make that case, I mean, or how do they feel about that explanation, certainly the people who are pushing this turn of it, or everybody who was in that election, you had a lot of people who voted for Obama in two terms and turned around and voted for Trump. Certainly those people weren't racist. And a lot of those people are still being lumped into that whole quote unquote white nationalist alt-right all this other stuff. You need those people if you want to win. I understand the point. Like, I, I guess I took the point of the article of, look, you're going to have to join with people who, an economic message gets you people where this other message don't. I guess that's the way I took it. I always take this from the lens of identity yeah. politics. You need those people. If you're trying to create a new society or a new um, power center, 
in society, you're going to need to join with people of different sex. You can't necessarily be in your own enclaves. If there are people who you can work with, work with those people. Again, yeah. oh man, Chernovich is a rough one just because of the stuff you said. But I understand your point. I understand what you're getting at. Let me ask you this. Why United States politics? One of the oh. complaints that I heard people make, and this didn't particularly bother me, but I thought it was still interesting. You live in okay. Australia, but you work, you do politics in the States. Yeah. Well, um, I was politically active from a young age, very young age. And um, so, you know, in the 90s, I was all about going to protests and stuff and uh, particularly anti, anti uh, you know, free trade union protests, or, well, you know, like supporting the unions, um, uh, yeah. the global thing and uh, Aboriginal rights, Indigenous rights and, um, and refugees and stuff like that. Nothing worked. Like, it just didn't work. And I got so despondent after the Iraq war, you know, when literally millions of people walked yes. in the streets. We, we gathered, we walked in the streets and our will was not fucking heard. Like, that it, like it, it still makes me sad, you know. So, um, so I, I kept doing the protest culture thing, but it, it wasn't. It clearly wasn't working. Then I went in for the consumer protest type thing. I um, had this website called Earth Mums, and oh, it was all about like you know trying to take away power from corporations by using my dollars. But I don't have many dollars, and the people. <laughs> And they just moved the goalposts anyway. They would just greenwash everything or, like, you know, put, like, smiling happy faces on it and stuff. And it, it just made me, like, realise that there was really nothing I could do. I actually I did my journalism degree. As I did my degree, I got more and more despondent about that. You know, it became very clear that, at least in the early 2000s, if you went into journalism, you would just... Uh, into any newspaper or anything, you would end up regurgitating AP or Reuters um, news things. You never got to actually do real journalism, talk to real people and connect and find out their real stories until maybe you were older and they had kind of worked out who you were. They'd kind of either ground you down or, like, got rid of you. You're vetted. <laughs> you're vetted. You was like, yeah, you regurgitate one yeah. word after the next. Yeah. Yeah. It's so then watch it. Yeah. It's amazing when you watch mainstream news. That's exactly what they do. Yeah. So it wasn't really until recently, and everyone knows that, you know, the, the, the collection of power, well, for whatever reason, is they're using the US government, but they're like, a, they're, they're multinational co corporations, basically, um, and at using the military industry complex of the states and the intelligence community of the states as well. But they're using them kind of as, like, they're using the US as a kind of um, host. They're, they're like parasites using them as a host, using the consent of the American people to pretty much send us on the, like, fast train okay. to, yeah, near-term extinction. <laughs> See, this is interesting to me. I, I've read right many of your posts. It, and I've noticed this emphasis on deep state. Now, what do you mean by deep state? See, I have a different idea in my head. So explain yeah. to me the deep state. Like, because that's a, that's a term that I think can sometimes mystify what something actually is. Like, it's like there could be forces. Like, for instance, I have this in my head. Yeah. We're functioning in a capitalistic system. In that capitalistic system, you have people who have incentives to accrue more. The incentive is get as much as you can possibly get maximize your profits. Now, if you tell people that that's their game space and you bind that particular game space to scarcity, those people maximize their profits, whether it's political, whether it's economic. Yeah. And you just throw those people out and say, hey, have at it. Well, of course, the people who have more are going to accrue more. It's just the way the system is built in that sense. That's right. the way it works in my head. Even from the standpoint of military, meaning, yes, if we have a militaristic economy where we're you know, making weapons and we're selling those weapons across the world, that's a military. That's our economy of sorts. We're essentially funding um, a jobs program in the United States to build weapons to murder people abroad. Now, what do you mean by deep state? That's my understanding of the way 
the politics and business kind of work to collude in order to get more, accrue more power. I don't necessarily take it as a nebulous thing. How do you define deep state in that sense? Well, I think you're right. I mean, I would go like, I'm happy with that definition too. I think that power, money is power. And when people have a lot of money, they have a lot of power. And so it's created a kind of uh, like a, an oligarchy, like a, 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 monarchy, a monarchy made out of money. And so when, you know, I, and, and when, the, one of the things that money does is that it, it, um, it values sociopathic behavior. Yes, yes, it does. It absolutely does. It makes those people nuts. Yeah, well, I mean, well, the people who are kind of, who don't care about people, don't have empathy, don't have compassion for people, can make more money more quickly because they, they're ready to do um, whatever it takes to make the money. And so it elevates sociopaths into the leadership positions um, of the world uh, and then into the kind of hidden leadership positions of the world as well. So what we have now is a kind of, it's legalised bribery, you know, that, yeah. that people can basically pay to play in the US government. Um, and so these, this, this collection of, you know, of people who have a lot of money, they also have a lot of power and they don't seem to have a lot of intelligence or compassion about actual humans or give a shit where all of this ends up. Um, the nature I mean, of the, you, you put a dollar yeah. sign on a person. I mean, uh, ultimately, what you yeah, you boiled people down to cash at that point. It's like how much can I accrue? Yeah, um, right. you, like, take people into account. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's, yeah, no, like I, I kind of see it the way you see it. I, I, um, there's also kind of levels of bureaucracy as well. You know, people just. Uh, that the government might change over, but there's this whole raft of people who never change. Um, oh, I see. Okay. So there's a kind of, there's an ongoing leadership, um, mm. you know. Yeah, so I kind of imagine, you know, when you get the presidency, like they they say, oh, welcome, Mr. President, this is the Oval Office, you know. Uh, it, in a while, just in a few minutes, you'll meet your real bosses. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you'll meet your real bosses. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. And that's fair. But I mean, it's, like, it's, it's much more complicated than that. And it, it really is just a system that has, has grown up around money and Ooh. the monopolizing Come of money. Come back to me. Oh. I'll ask you for a moment. Oh, I'm lost. I can hear you. Yeah? There you are. Ah, cool. Welcome back. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, it's a little bit. Oh, that's okay. That's good. Yeah. No, you're good. So, yeah, that's where I see. Um, and I, what, what I actually see, I see their real weakness as the media because mm. none of that would work. If, if, you know, Americans could see for a moment what is being done in their name, just to flash, there would be so much grief. There would be, like, because... They don't care. I live here. They don't care. I, I, I have to be honest. They don't care. I, I know what you're saying, and I get it. But I'll give you an example. When you made that post saying the U.S. warmongering thing, if you notice, it mattered more that you named Chernovich than the whole U.S. warmongering thing. That's us. That's this country. That's this country. I, I know that sounds harsh. That sounds bad. We do bad things. I don't think the country cares. You know, the McCain thing was interesting because, you know, I said, I said it would, like, I just wish that he, I hope for his peaceful and natural death as soon as possible so he will oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. Right? Now, now the, the post for McCain, it's funny. I've had people who said they lost respect for me when I said I agreed. Explain right. your point for the John McCain thing, please. Please explain it so everyone can understand what you meant by it. Well, I just, you know, I, I wish I wish he would go away like I wish cancer would go away. I wish he would go away like I wish nuclear holocausts would go away. I, he's, he is a killing machine. He's never shown any compassion for, for any living thing other than himself. Um, he's... Uh, look, I'm not God. I can't say that he won't change. But 
if, if I was to put money on someone who's not going to have like a, a like an epiphany, I, I would say it's freaking John McCain. And I really hope that um, he takes that horrible, sick worldview, very powerful, powerful man who has inflicted hundreds of thousands of deaths upon the planet. Um, I hope that that dies. I understand. <laughs> I had a conversation with my mom the other day, and I told her about the post, and she was like, oh, my God, it's ghastly. Yeah. And you kind of make the point, like, but you understand that he's been responsible, at the very least, okay with the deaths of thousands and thousands and thousands of people, completely unempathetic. Should people care about him having brain cancer? I mean, that's somewhat of, you know, the, the, the crux of the conversation. You yeah. see well, what no, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, what he sees is that, you know, when you have compassion for other humans, uh, uh, you can tend to kind of not make distinctions. Like, we, we tend to go binary in our thinking about, you know, that, that it's either one way or another. And, you know, uh, I hate death and I hate killing. Therefore, I hate John McCain. I, he is a killing machine. And I, 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 I don't want that in the world anymore. I want life. I want people to live. I want life to, to get a chance, you know. I cheer on life and, you know, and, and let death die. If death loves death so much, let it die. Let it take its, you know, take its death thing. And why do we support death with our life? Why do we wish death health? And, you know, I <laughs> just... I, Why I, we... I, think I, I think I know what you're saying. I think I know what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's I know what you're saying. It, I noticed one of the other things. You seem to be a little bit of a bomb thrower yourself. Now, like. that's, that's I think it's garnered you a bit of attention. Uh, like you said, sometimes you make the news, sometimes you are the news. <laughs> What's that style come from? I mean, uh, that's somewhat distinctive in the way that you write. What's the... Is that just a natural writing style? I, I don't want to be particular here, but I found it interesting as I went through the articles. I was like, wow, that's kind of snarky. It's kind of funny, but it's also kind of true. Well, it just talk from my guts. And, uh, and sometimes what I have to say is uh, going to, to rattle some cages. Like, I, I just try and say what's true for me. And I don't make any bones about it. I don't try to pretend it's true for everyone else. I, I just say it from my guts and what is true for me. And then if you like it, then you'll go, you'll be like, yeah, thank God someone said that out loud. And if you don't, like, you don't have to like me. Like, that's that's okay. I just figure that uh, we've all got to kind of put our voices out there as truthfully as possible, as honestly as we can. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, sometimes it's been hard to press publish. It has. Um, but it's often really interesting how uh, sometimes I'll think, oh, shit, and then, like, press send, and nothing <laughs> has been. No one gives a shit. I, I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, like, <laughs> dodge that bullet or whatever. And then other things blow up that, you know. Don't pay that, attention uh, to yeah, that yeah. that I just thought were common sense, you know. Yeah. And that's interesting to me as well. The same. things that I think are common sense. Yeah, same thing. I, I've done videos where I thought was yeah. as sane as sane can be. And it became a just a big mess. And it was like, why are these people arguing over something that seems to be perfectly rational? Um that I, I understand <laughs> I understand you on that point. I'm curious. You you have been getting right much attention though from the left. It's interesting though seeing how the left breaks down on this. I mean, you're pretty. It's interesting. It's anti-establishment left. It's almost like they're factions of the left. You have some people who are more. How can I say it? How do you see leftist politics in the United States? If if that makes sense, and that's not a very specific question. That's somewhat general, but it's. You mean the factionalizing and balkanizing of yeah, but your journalism speaks to a very specific type of left, if, if that makes sense. You're right. clearly in my sandbox. Clearly <laughs> in the sandbox of several other people who've had your back on this particular case. In a general, read your stuff and even post your stuff. Counterpunch right. did somewhat of a hit piece, a, a shocking hit piece, actually. Which, 
Like you three yeah, hit pay If I'm not mistaken, that was the whole thing that bought this Mike Chernovich article or kicked us up with that. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. Washington Post also disowned of a hit piece. What do you think their issue is with you on this? What's what's I've read their piece. I didn't necessarily quite get their point. I didn't necessarily see um what they were getting at. It's more so, you know, she's in Australia. Yeah. That seems to be their big issue. What's yeah. the issue of the left with your brand of leftism, if that makes sense? I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. I don't even know. Like, because they haven't been able to lay it out for me in a way that I can understand. Yeah. Um. So, because I know, you know, and and they've cr- they created that Senovich thing, like, out of, you know, she must be a, like a, a secret white supremacist. Uh, and, you know, it, like uh, these are people who, who must have read my stuff and know that I've never advocated anything remotely like white supremacy. Or, like it's it's the polar opposite. So they, they, they knew that they couldn't really say that, but then they linked me to that guy. So whatever their issue is with me, it, it's embarrassing. Like they can't say it out loud. It's probably personal for all the yeah. different people. Some some of it would be because I'm Australian, and they find that some of it because of my um, my Russia Gate stuff. I know that a couple of them, you know, are really uh, on the Russia Gate train. There's people who are. <sighs> wait, wait. Always- let's talk about the Russia Gate stuff for the moment. Mm-hmm. You know, so what's your Russia? narrative do, so do you believe that russia hacked the election Look, i personally don't but do you believe that they hacked the election and just for an interesting point did you see that they caught deborah walsman schultz um i guess it was this it staffer trying to leave the country today at delhi's airport locked the guy up and apparently the guy had access according to the hedge to deborah walsman schultz ip address or her ipad address meaning she had access to dnc emails yeah. now the question becomes is it a leak or did Russia hack us? Well, there was also it? the um, uh, intelligent community vets that came out as well and said it must have been a leak and they, they gave all their reasons why. Um, yeah, it was, I'm pretty sure, like, the evidence, the actual evidence is in that it is a leak. I don't see how a, like, a nation as widely surveilled, surveyed as the US where every data package that ever leaves the country um, or enters the country can be examined and is examined and is cross-examined. You know, they're searchable uh, from Mm -hmm. what we know from Snowden. They can run, like, they can drill down on data just crossing the lines um, between the US and and Russia or whatever. Um, When a nation is under so much scrutiny, surveillance, the fact that they don't have any evidence for that right now uh, just speaks volumes. Like, it's what, eight, nine months now? So, yeah. uh, it, it, like, it, common sense says that it has to be a leak. But also, like, you just watch the way that they're using this Russia thing to, to drum up like war tensions and that's that's they're just their dick is so hard for a freaking war with russia um and it has been from the beginning like way before the 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 narrative with like started with the russia stuff um and there's evidence to say that you know that they 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 came up with this you know on the uh the clinton thing yeah after she lost the campaign came up with it you know this is a podesta invention shattered um in her book shattered Day after the election, she was shocked and hurt, and she got tired of people saying, "Hey, how did you lose to reality show host?" And <laughs> after a while, they came up and says, "You know what? The narrative that no one is talking about is Russia hacked us," and the news yeah. jumped on it and went with it and ran with it for eight months, and they have not been able to produce any evidence showing that Russia, like literally, produce it where people could see it, put their hands on it. Right. They've relied on CrowdStrike, who's been somewhat discredited, and you have all these people now coming out saying, "Look, this looks like a leak." This looks like a leak. Well, CrowdStrike is is related to the Atlantic Council. You know, they are the neocons. You know, they so um, CrowdStrike, and that's what's fascinating. You know, in the, all of those um, 
uh, sessions that they had with Comey, et cetera. Comey was saying all these things in an authoritative manner that, you know, like that it was definitely a hack and that it was the Russians or whatever. But when you actually listen to what he's saying, the only evidence he saw for that was through CrowdStrike. The FBI. Yes, that's it. They never saw the FBI servers. They never yeah, saw they, ne they, they never saw it for themselves. So he is just relaying in a confident manner because he can. Uh, you know, someone else's information. It's like someone else who is quite compromised and actually, you know, we shouldn't trust the uh, the opinions of and has other agendas, other money, dark money. So, yeah, they, I think Russiagate is bullshit. It is. Thank you. <laughs> it is. I agree. I, like, yeah. I'm so sick of hearing about Russia. I'm absolutely sick of hearing about Russia. I, um... Yeah, most yeah. people are now. Yeah, it's, yeah. That, it has to, man. It has to. I, it, it's not working first. Like the the polls here show that the public, for the most part, don't care. They don't care. Well, yeah. Why would they? Because it doesn't actually make their lives any better. Mm -mm. You know, uh, it, this so is you, just looking after the egos of the Clintonists. <laughs> so, how do you break through the narratives then? Like from indie press, because that's what we are for the most part. We're indie media. I, I guess I'm in news analysis. You're right. in journalism. What's how do you break through that? Because ultimately, you have. We're. I, I thought to myself. I always wonder whether or not we're in an echo chamber, and whether or not yeah. all of us, everybody, for to some degree, is in their enclaves in their sandbox. There's aspects where we intersect, like a Venn diagram. And I often wonder: Is this purely in our echo chamber? But then I would see like Joe Manchin come on the Young Turks, or I would see somebody else come on some of these progressive networks. And I'd be like, no, we're not in the echo chamber. That stuff is breaking through. Otherwise, they wouldn't necessarily care about these narratives. Seth Rich thing was a yeah. big one. They yeah. would not let that go. And they had to keep bashing that narrative in saying, no, 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 there's no way this guy could have given evidence over. I don't care what WikiLeaks says. I don't care what Julian Assange says. There's no way he could have gave it over. They went with that narrative for months on end. And if you had to go for that narrative months on end, why did you have to take that narrative to that extent? So right. there's a breakthrough. Yeah. How do you... Yeah. From your standpoint as a journalist, how do you break through? How do you get that message or inject that particular message into something that goes beyond just this, if that makes sense? Well, I think, uh, you know, what you're doing is great. Like I, I went and had a look at your um, interview with uh, Rod Wheeler, is it? The PI for... Um, oh, yeah. 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 So, you know, uh, he's, uh, you know, toxic now. You can't talk to him because the thought police say that he is, you know, persona non grata. Like thought police will fuck themselves. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> again. I, I, I hate this idea of thought police. People are people, man. People, Rod Wheeler did nothing. Rod Wheeler, he explained his point in regards to what took place and what happened. Now, somebody said, oh, the guy's lying. I don't think the guy's lying. He came across as being genuine to me. Yeah, he does to me too. But you, I mean, and you took the time to sit down with him, have a conversation, like in a relaxed manner, just like you're doing with me now, and 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 have a human to human contact with them, you know, so, uh, without the kind of uh, hyperbole or whatever. Uh, so there's that. I think the, the collaboration part of that is is actually just saying, oh, you know, what are you saying there? I don't understand it. Let's talk about it. Uh, let's bring because we're all looking at this thing from like a tiny little, uh, our little perspective, you know. Mm -hmm. Here I am, white Australian, across the other side of the world. <laughs> I can only say what I see, you know. I like, I can only tell you what I'm seeing. I don't. I'm, and and then you. So you've got this important perspective that you need to narrate, yeah. and and because I trust you, I will take that narration on as a part of my worldview, yeah. right? So that's an important part of the kind of uh, process of unpacking these narratives and s saying to each other, you know, hang on, I think that's pretty weird. Is that pretty weird from your angle? And like, yeah, actually, I saw this thing too. And collaborating, you know, putting together pieces of the, the world um, as much as we can, you know, we'll never get the whole picture, but trying to, to, to piece it together. And the other thing is, and this is something that I um, try and do a lot, is make a big noise and say outrageous things and get people looking at your stuff. Don't be scared to uh, to say the things that everyone's thinking and not one's saying. Um, 
don't be scared to talk to the people who you're not allowed to talk to. Uh, and, and you think be, yeah, a person. And, think be a person. And be a person. <laughs> be, yeah, be, be a, a whole human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Humanity like, for the world. Like people are people. Oh, whoa. Oh, what is that? No, you need to that. Wait, wait. Uh, what happened? What happened? Is this from my end or from your end? Oh, you know, it's dodgy internet in Australia. Ah, I see. Okay, that's a little better. There it is. Stop. Okay, here's a question. When I look at the world, everybody is looking at the world from a particular point of view. So I look at it from somewhat of a humanistic point of view. What ensures life? And that's, that's my basis of looking at it. I don't necessarily care about the other stuff. What's yours? And, and I know you put a, a lot of emphasis on this thing of we're killing people abroad. Stop killing people abroad. You're just, you know, you're destroying the world for economic reasons. Where is your, where are you on the lefty scale? If that makes sense. So if, if there is a lefty scale, what's, put right. it this way, what are the things, if you lived in this country, what were the things you yourself would want in regards to how this country need to be okay. altered or well, changed? And I know this sounds weird because somebody might say she doesn't even live here. I get it. it. It's not that she lives here. I'm just making a point. She is talking about American politics. And if we're talking about American politics, we're also talking about what are the things you want to take place in the country to which you find yourself. I would make the case that her giving her perspective on what those things are, meaning like healthcare, education, whether it's how you try to pull those things off in regards to the economic system to do it. What's your scale? What's the thing that you want to accomplish in regards to you being a journalist and the things that you're trying to push? Well, I think because I have an American husband, so we have this kind of you know, ongoing conversation about the differences, and he's been living here. Uh, so, so I think what I want is for Americans to get the entitlement to demand the things that I take for granted here. And you know, I'm not saying that Australians have it great. Like we could certainly, you know, take take more as well but we do I never think about healthcare. for example I never think about it I you know if my kid is sick I take him to the doctor the hospital I can ring a doctor and have him come to the home um, I just it, it's not a bit it doesn't impact me unless someone's sick then I focus on their sickness I never think about the money I don't have to I really want that from <laughs> for American socialist. people you're being a socialist you're being a socialist. <laughs> you're being a socialist. You're a commie. Oh, I, I don't know how to get it across to Americans. I'm glad that you said that. I don't know how to. Right. Well, it's so great. I mean, you know, and I, would, I don't even, it's this privilege that I enjoy that I had no idea I really had until I started, you know, like, my American husband, you know, will go to the doctors and he'll, he'll come out and go, that's amazing. <laughs> um, but it's not amazing. It's, it's our right. It's our right to have health care. That's what I truly believe. I also think a living wage is something that I enjoy here in Australia that I would really love. I, I think beyond single payer, a living wage um, creates some sort of economic justice that means that um, you know the the racial issues that um, just aren't as at the surface because there there aren't these kind of layers of poverty going on, um, which really you know money is power. Give people power. Give people money. M you know, just give them money. <laughs> which is give them money. You know, Martin Luther King, when in one of his last things, he was marching for economic justice. It, it ultimately, right. what he realized was, look, regardless of race and everything else, I can't change anybody's mind on race. There are going to be people who hate my guts as soon as they get out of bed in the morning. I don't care. What I care about is whether or not, or economic freedom. It's like your degree of freedom is constrained by how much cash you have in your pocket. If you're yeah. poor, like if you're just dirt, dirt, dirt poor, there is no freedom in that particular society at all. Right. Um, I am glad you said that. It's hard to get Americans to realize that other countries have certain things and don't even think about those things. Like you have other countries where you can go to school for free. It's not something you think about. There's not $50,000 hanging over your head after school. If well, you could yeah, I went through a system. My, my degree only cost me like 12000 and it was in, on a loan 
that I don't have to pay off until I reach a certain amount of money, which is quite, like I've never made that amount of money. So I've never paid off my loan. And if I die, my loan dies with me. Because, you know. Not I, here. No. That's not that here. Your loan will follow you to the day that you die. You would have 50, no, I'm sorry, for like 20 years after which tax comes on it, in which case the IRS comes after you for the twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000. That that's, is that's just, it. that is, I mean, <laughs> like it really it's, like, <laughs> it's uh, people what people don't realize is the government that they get is the government they're willing to tolerate they don't get it they full well think that the things that happen to them are purely somehow external to them they make these choices what i need a perfect example obamacare 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 has all sorts of problems has all sorts of flaws it is not a great system at all but it did one very specific thing it broke the shell in american consciousness of healthcare. People had said, holy shit, we can have health care here? Yeah. <laughs> the Republicans now, John McCain, John McCain with brain cancer is now going to the Senate. And if I'm not mistaken, they're talking about making a vote on whether or not they're going to kill Obamacare and put in a shittier version called Trump Care. Americans were pissed at that. Now, understand what I mean, understand the gravity of that. You went from a system where people didn't realize that they could even get health care, calling health care slavery to having Obamacare and now being angry that Obamacare is being taken away because they themselves say, holy shit, we should have health care here. That is a good sign, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And now they're talking about single payers on the table, single payers on the table because of us bitching and moaning about single payer. Right, yeah. That's what it, look, yeah. People, look, people can dislike us being on the far left. You can dislike me all you want. I make this point that we are the right, we're right. We're the people who are pulling this country to a better direction. Any change that has ever taken place in this country has come from the left. And it's come from the people who are yanking and pulling and bitching and moaning yeah. about the country being better. Yeah. That's the right. truth. I mean, that's just the right. basic truth. Please tell me what else you guys have in Australia that we should have in this country if people just wanted to be people and live a decent life. I know you said uh, healthcare, college, um, what, the uh, living wage. I mean, just those basic three. Like, think about that. That's an amazing thing. I've got that's an amazing thing. I'm sorry. I, I'm gushing over that because it's one of those things of in that particular country, that's just a foregone conclusion of something that they have as people. We have a really good safety net here. It's being eroded over time through neoliberalism, but we have yeah. really good welfare and I've had to use it and I've been so grateful. Uh, and I, I had to use it too while I was di discovering, you know, American politics and things like that and realizing that the situation that I was in would mean homelessness if I had been yes. living in. <laughs> yes, you would be out of, yes, you would be homeless. If me You'd and my kids there. would have been out on the streets. Um, so, <laughs> like, I can't tell you how important that is. Like, that's so important, especially for people, uh, especially for women uh, who are caring for kids, for people caring for disabled people, or disabled people, um, people with mental illness, uh, you know, people who come back from wars destroyed by them. I, it's so important to have a safety net where, you know, you, you're not throwing people out on the streets just because they didn't get enough oblongs, you know, rectangles, little green rectangles that apparently- It not mean anything. It has no value. It's, yeah. value. it's, it's this yeah. conceptual thing that they come up with. And then it creates this kind of invisible chain on people. It's, it's just bizarre. It's just absolutely bizarre. Um, yeah. Hey, would you like to take some questions? Or first, before anything, is there anything you want to say to my audience, your own audience for that matter, about any particular topic, just in general? Um, let me think. It could be anything. I, I do I, this because it was a conversation. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and I just didn't get to finish my point on Sinovich, and because that's such a, you know, <laughs> such a oh, topic. Of, yeah, I, I'd just like to, to point out that um, that just because I, I think he's okay, I don't think everyone should think he's okay. I don't think everyone should go with him. I, um, like, you know, I... <laughs> I think we all need to find our own sovereign boundaries within this, and that's one of my kind of philosophies that I see uh, in in my my world and in the outer world. In that I need to do what I need to do, and I want my own will to do that. That's what I see as freedom, uh, and yes. for 
people who have been oppressed by money, by, you know, race, by gender, etc. All we're trying to do is get back our will to be able to, to enact what we want to do um, individually as people. Um, and that means that I sh should not, if I'm, you know, intellectually honest with myself and a compassionate person who believes in other people's free will, I should not impact other people's um, free choice. I should not, like, overstep my boundaries and say, no, you need to, this is what you need to do. Um, this is what you think, this is what you believe, blah, 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 which is, you know, what we see the mass media doing all the time. They, they tell us what we think and what we believe and then they set us upon each other. It's these divide and conquer lines. So um, in order to collaborate, I just, I guess I'm asking from the collective permission to do some more out there things for me and for people who are like me and feel like that they can they can walk that walk, you know, like who feel, but that's only my role in the ship, you know, like if we were a ship, like sailing a kind of sailing boat ship or whatever, it would be stupid to have someone on lookout and someone on the jib, you know, and the, the person on lookout saying down to the person on the jib, come up here, come up, be a lookout. You know, if we're all on lookout, the ship would fall over. We all have our different roles and things that we need to do. And I'm just trying to give us some more some space and permission to let each other go and do the things that we know need doing because, like, we're running out of time. We don't have time for this shit. We need to kind of start trusting the people that we trust and um, just get together and make this thing happen as quickly as we can. Like there's impending, you know, um, human extinction, but people are just dying. People are dying in the streets right now because of lack of health care. Like this, this is an ongoing, they're dying in these wars in Syria and everything. This yeah. needs to end. And the, the longer we, our infighting stops us from actually enacting this medicine that we have at our disposal and we need to get into the eye of the monster, like, then the, the longer it is that people are actually suffering and that, you know, that I feel that tension. And I know other people do too. It's this kind of biological urge to survive that we, we're all kind of feeling that we need to just do things and stuff and grab hands and just push. So that's, yeah. So I just wanted to wrap that up with Senovich because, you know, what? He's a fucking asshole as well. Like, I, and I see that. Like, I, I, I don't want to date him. I don't want to, like, I don't know. I, I don't want to. I think it would be a big mistake to put a T-shirt on him and have him a part of our club as well. I just want to tip my hat every now and then go say, yeah, that guy's, you know, saying something over there that we all agree with. Yay. End of story. You know? Yeah. Like. So, That's yeah. not it. I understand. I, I didn't look. I honestly didn't take it that way. I, I, I saw that. All, <laughs> I knew you, I you read the article. And I, I, like, yeah. <laughs> I took that article purely as look. And here's another thing. I've done posts before. I've done videos where I somebody would tweet something or somebody would say something, and the video would kind of lead to an impetus for another thought. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do a video of this. And somebody kind of points out later, like, hey, you realize that so and so wasn't. It's like, oh. It's yeah. not necessarily that people have perfect knowledge when they're doing something. I, I don't necessarily think you knew each and everything that was in his particular catalog when you plucked right. them out of the hat. And we can, that's, I mean, yeah, you feel me on that. Like, it's just, you, you kind of got to go with what you've got and surge. You know, yeah. I know I don't know everything about everything. I just, I know I don't. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure what I've got is solid. So I push that out as far as I can and as hard as I can and as loud as I can. Because we just got to at this stage. That's so, all you can do. That's all you can do. And look, you've said it yourself that you like somewhat edgy. I, I guess you've made that point. So you know you're going to get a little heat sometimes. On the heart. Right. <laughs> you know, get yeah, a little yeah. heat. I, the whole process as well, you know. Um, yeah, I hope, process. I hope you said attention, you know, to bring attention to people like you as well. Like, you know, I know that there oh. are eyes watching this, waiting for me to make a mistake, but also they might discover you. So <laughs> <laughs> they're waiting for you to make a mistake. You think they're plotting your downfall <laughs> on YouTube? Oh, I'm sure they are, you know. So I, that's, look, that's cool. I, I part of it. this way. People will always, anything that you do will kick up dust. It doesn't matter what you do. 
I, I, I might look yeah. at James Baldwin. Um, I saw this conversation James Baldwin had with Malcolm X. It was an amazing conversation, absolutely amazing conversation on race. They were being honest, they were being frank. Neither person necessarily was getting hurt or, or pissed by it. And James Baldwin had this really good point of this being a complex history. And this, and being a complex history, you have it's a history we have to do together. Mm-hmm. Meaning, there's no way of um, there's no us and them. It's yes, the guy, he may be horrible and disgusting. That guy is going to agree with you on one or two things. It would be crazy to repudiate those things just because that guy agreed with you on those things. I just find it to be a weird policy. Um, I get it. People don't like the name, but the name doesn't mar the article. That's all. I, I guess that's my point. The name, naming one guy doesn't necessarily change the point of saying, look, if the left wants to do anything in this country with regards to politics you're going to need those people who left the left right well yeah and i think actually you know can i add another thing to my list of things we have in australia because we have a reasonably fair electoral system we've we parties are allowed to come and go they live in Mm -hmm. you know it's there is some uh elitism and establishment old school tie sort of things but not nearly as much pardon parliament prime minister Parliament and the Prime Minister, yeah. So the parties come and go. The Green Party is very strong here. Um, And, in fact, the Green Party has held the balance of power in several states and in the nation at different points. Um, It's not necessarily the largest party, but because of how it's constructed, their voice can actually be a lot stronger uh, in certain configurations of the party, uh, of the, the parliament. The, but also the way that our structure is set up, coalitions are really important. Um, you you often have to make what they call a minority government, which means that you have to, to kind of like put down your ideological stuff and uh, be okay with um, you know teaming up with a few people who are kind of not where you're at. But you know, get the things through that you you know that you want to do. So that's kind of my history of politics. I'm I'm used to that. I uh, you know sometimes you have to team up with the guy from the motoring enthusiast party for for real. Like that that was one of the parties that that was in our national government for a while. He's a congressman, you know, and he turned out to be a really good normal bloke, you know, yeah. who yeah, he, all right, he was into cars, <laughs> but. But he also saw a lot of kind of normal issues that we, you know, that that many Greens, he could work with the Greens, which was interesting. So they they had him hey, as a that's part of the question. Greens, why aren't Greens popular in the United States? You may not know this. I, I'm asking from just from your opinion, just from your perspective. You're in a country that actually does have a Green Party. Um, what what's the difference? What does what do the Greens, from your opinion, and an I'm bringing this up because the article said that you were trying to destroy the Green Party. <laughs> That's amazing. It's amazing. Kayla Johnson is destroying the Green Party. It's amazing. That's an actually absolutely amazing article. What are the Greens doing wrong in the States? What are the um, Greens doing wrong in the States? Why can't I they get the foothold? Wrong. In fact, my um, my experience of the Greens is that they have bowled up the most impressive people I've ever met in my life or ever heard about. Ralph Nader, David Cobb, uh, Cynthia McKinney, Jill Stein. These are amazing people. Then what's like, the problem? What's, what's going on? If it's not the people, then what's the mechanism? What's the thing that's keeping them from getting a little bit more clout? It's the power. Yes, power power structure like it's the media it's the um the corruption it's the the deep state keeping all of these people from be, having a voice if you put jill stein in a debate with anyone they are going down in a big way and they do not want that to happen and that's why they yeah. attack us because we're just the medicine and they know that you know as soon as you start speaking about these things something in people's hearts just blossoms you know they want this they they really want this and and she could speak from that place she could speak very logically from that place and so they just packed on all of these smear campaigns you know like the same things that they're doing right now with me taking these small things she said something about vaccines and suddenly Jill Stein is anti-vax and she's anti-science. A doctor is anti-science. The doctor is anti-science, yeah, the doctor. Yeah, you know, the doctor. So, 
they they're very very fucking good at it they are geniuses at creating these revolting smear campaigns that just make people go ah oh, no not really that's not really my thing so the polar so past it like how do you get i guess what i'm asking you is how do you get past that hey, in one of your articles you wrote don't give up you said there was a way of getting past it i guess that's what i'm trying to get at well i see i see all of this being held together by like a network of stories and we just need to attack the stories like uh mm. like with single payer you know bernie sanders for all his faults or whatever came out there made that his centerpiece of his platform people had to talk about it in the mass media and then suddenly people are like that's actually a really good idea why don't yeah. we have that? like because it's such common sense it's just normal thinking but he injected that idea into the consciousness so um so he had to do that in a big way or whatever but we can still unpack these narratives um you know from our like our from sandbox. our kitchen our, <laughs> right from our sandboxes does that yeah. mean working within the democratic party itself that's well, well, I think and that's that's the question. Like that's yeah. the thing that plagues progressives on this one, or people who are from the left. If you see a candidate that you like, do you vote for that candidate? I have yet to vote for another Democrat since Sanders. Since Sanders was in that competition. <laughs> right, right. Well, I think working from within and working from without is the the best way. Any strategy for a, mm -hmm. in a war. You, um, so I wish those who are inside the Dem Party well, and I, I, I hope for their sake that they're holding their shape and they're not capitulating to the bullshit and getting to being a part of the corruption because that's really what they have to do. If you're going to go into the Dem Party, be a fighter. You know, be like me. Be, hold your shape and don't let the bastards, you know, tell you what you think or what you are. Like, I love be, that. Hold your shape. I love that. I love that. Hold yeah. your shape. Do you? Right. That's fair. No, I like that. I like that. I, I'm just curious from an outside perspective. And, and and this will be the last question. What's the perspective of the United States from Australia, for that matter? I, I've I've been abroad and I've seen um, I've seen comedy shows that had conversations about the United States or even news outlets when I am abroad looking at the perspective of the United States. How? What's I guess I'm saying the relationship between Australia and the United States now, and also what's the perspective from Australians themselves of the well, US? Australians really love, we call you the Yanks. We love the Yanks. Um, <laughs> uh, we do, like, because you're really warm hearted, big, generous people, you know, and there's this warmth that emanates from regular Americans that is really hard to, you know, you just, and the charisma and the charm and stuff like that, and you're funny and you're outlandish and you're out there, like in a way that we're not, we're quite like, ah, and we kind of, you know, uh, I think because of our kind of, uh, we, we came basically from, you know, yeah, but we were all prisoners. <laughs> right, so, you were dragged over so the we, slave colony, right. So yeah, they we're quite submitted um and so to to each other and yeah, we we find you really <laughs> great medicine in, in a lot of ways. We have this thing called a tall poppy sy syndrome in that we try to cut each other down when we get too big and too loud. Yeah. Um yeah. <laughs> so you know, like people like me. Uh, Australians don't like me much. And oh, <laughs> <laughs> too loud and brash. Too loud and brash. Yeah. Uh, you know, th I think somebody, that's really somebody really asked me. They said, "What do you think about Caitlyn Johnson?" And I, I started looking at one piece after the next, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is pretty good. This is pretty. I like her perspective, or at the very least, I like I like the way you write, even if I don't necessarily always agree with the perspective." Um, yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm glad you came on. Uh, let me get some questions. Are you open for taking a few questions from the audience? Yeah, actually, I was losing power, but now I've got power, so I'm good. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. All right, guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. She is open for questions. No, man, this was awesome. I, I was looking forward to this. I was, I was curious. I haven't, man, I haven't been on straight in a while. I used to enjoy it. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. We had, um, the, the calamari you guys have it everywhere it's like anywhere you go there's calamari yeah we do love calamari i don't know why yeah i love it 
Yeah, and love love it. It. I, one of the things I noticed, it was like, it was calamari. Like we have French fries here. Anywhere you go, <laughs> just calamari. <laughs> There's a place on Sydney on the seaside where um, this restaurant, they have like these heaters and everything out for when it gets cold. And yeah, it was the best fucking calamari I've ever had in my life. I, hands down, hands down. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm going in this this detour of sorts. Yeah, they did you see them? Um, I was looking at the press today, and they locked up. Yeah, I think I mentioned it earlier. They locked up Double Wasserman Schultz, who's um IT guy. And yeah. now the question becomes, uh oh, what's going to fall out from that particular investigation, and why isn't the media talking about the fact that that guy had the iPad address? I mean, or had her password. I don't know, but it's got to be good. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be interesting. That's going to be extraordinarily interesting. They're, don't get me wrong. They're still going to talk about Trump, but this is going to be interesting. And this is going to be the echo chamber thing. Does the story bubble into the mainstream if we're screaming at the top of our lungs about it? Well, this is a story that's that correct. the right will be screaming about. The right will be yeah. really into this. Um, and I think we should be screaming along with them because it's important. The Debbie Wasserman Schultz phenomena throughout the uh, Democratic Party is the reason why there's, you know, like she is, she's intrinsic to that corruption. Yes. And, and why yes. there is no fair primaries and therefore no fair elections in America. If, you, if, you, if one of the parties refuses to have fair primaries, then you only get to really vote for the other guy. Like they cheated. The other loser. That's what it was. They completely they, cheated. We have Donald yeah. Trump as our president because of the actions they took in the primary. Right. That's From the Pied Piper email onwards, you know. And so they, they had this whole plan. It backfired. And uh, <laughs> and so now, now there's Trump leading the world. How wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Save us. You know, it's happen? funny. You guys are in Australia, so you're you're somewhat insulated from this. I was here, right. man. I was I was in enemy territory. I I <laughs> when Donald Trump first took over, it, it was like there's no way this guy can make it. And then I thought to myself, no, the, he's he's the Republican. Like he's he's the honest Republican. This is their this is who they are. And one he was killing them in one primary after the next. And then he comes up with Hillary Clinton Sanders, and I thought. If Bernie Sanders wins this, Bernie Sanders is going to be president of the United States because there's no way. If we're in a populist mode, they're going to take the real populist, not, right. not, not the blue-collar billionaire who's calling himself a populist. Right. And one primary after the next. Oh, we just threw 100,000 people off the voter rolls. It was a mistake. There was, no yeah. cool, there was nothing there. That was just a pure mistake. Yes, we stole Nevada, but that's just politics. Sam Cedar was on the other day saying some lib. Well, I mean, there was no cheating in the DNC primaries. Yes, there was cheating in the DNC primaries. There was cheating in the DNC primaries. It's amazing that you can see WikiLeaks and then make that statement. It's amazing. He was having a conversation with Tim Black when he said it. Oh, well, man, so it's aggravating to me. It, it, there was so much cheating that sometimes, every now and then I'll remember something. I go, wow, that really happened. Like I was yes. just remembering this morning, I was in the shower, and I remembered how AP uh, and others um, – were rigging their polls so that they were just, I can't remember the demographic that they were polling, but it was something like only people over 50 and then it became only people over 65, only people, yeah. uh, only white people, and so, so that they could get a poll that looked like Hillary Clinton was going to take it over Bernie Sanders. Yes. And that yes. all creates kind of inevitability spell well, that ever that even the the they were even putting in the um super delegates super delegates don't vote until the very end they were putting the super delegate vote right into the, the vote itself so it made it look like she had like a thousand more votes than bernie sanders she had sold right. up that vote before they even started the election yeah. think about that like the majority of the vote had all or the, a large share of the vote had already been taken not for anybody voting but purely because she was able to sew those votes up being hillary clinton that's amazing that's amazing. It, it is amazing. <laughs> Incredible. That's our electoral system. That is literally yeah. our electoral system. Oh, oh, all yeah. right. So somebody said, can you please write an article about how, well, okay. Uh, I, you're, you're not going to do that. <laughs> I'll go to the next one. <laughs> Thank you, Mal. Said, you, know, you missed Sam's point. I didn't miss Sam's point. I, had a, I heard the conversation between um, him and Black. 
he tried to make the point that this was just politics, that the stuff that took place in the primaries was just politics. I'm saying the stuff that took place in the primaries was not just politics. They cheated. That's the point I'm making. Um, let's see. It says, do you think an independent candidate can win in 2020? Yes. This was, um, yeah. let me see, who asked that? Who asked that? Where's, where's the name? Where's the name? Uh, Danny Jeremy K James King. Uh, yeah, I, I think anyone who can um, take the feeling of the nation and um, we have the internet now. Uh, look, 2016 was a very interesting year. I think it's the last year that they'll, they'll be able to even hold on in the way that they did and they, they, it didn't go how they wanted it to go down either. Like, I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So, I think, so look, I'm sorry, I'm taking over slightly because I want to answer this. So 2020 yeah. is going to be, a, that's going to be a civil war. And I'm not necessarily saying in a war sort of way. I'm just saying what's going to take place in the Democratic Party in 2020 is going to be amazing. That's yeah. What I'm right. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I can't, that they're, they're losing control of the narrative more and more each day. Um, this, you know, every day more stuff comes out and they, they're throwing everything that they can at this Russia yeah. thing that's dead. There's nothing there. I mean, it's like yeah. literally there's no there there. If they've been talking about this for six or seven months and one thing after the next, they've been talking about it. It's like we're murdering people abroad. Do you fucking get that? Like it's aggravating to me to watch mainstream news. I, I can't I can't tolerate it. It's um th this is kind of why I make the point that they don't care. Obama was killing civilians at a massive extent, like a massive degree. And he would come out, he would smile, he would croon and sing in all of these places, and Obama was perfectly okay because he could do that. What he was doing abroad didn't matter. Surveilling everybody in the country didn't matter. None of that stuff mattered. Attacking the press didn't matter. Locking up whistleblowers didn't matter. Donald Trump comes into office, and the first thing they're arguing about is we need to protect whistleblowers. Like, it, it's, it's a sham. All of this stuff is a game to them. That game, I think, comes up in 2020. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Like, I, yeah, I can't see that. The, the whole Democratic plan is to run like a fear campaign on Russia and run a candidate who is not Trump again. Yeah. That's their whole thing. You know, they literally they came move. up with slogans that they were basically move. like, well, at least he's not Trump. They can't sustain that for four years. Like, they just can't. They, they have, they're barely sustaining it now. Um, Anyone who has a bit of guts, a bit of glory, ready to throw themselves at it and stuff and truly just wants to do it for reasons, you know, n nothing to do with ego, um, just wants to get the job done, we will... Do you think Sanders will run again? What about Sanders? Well, he hasn't ruled it out, but I... You know, I uh oh, I hear hesitation. What's the hesitation on Sanders? Yes, he's going to have some age on him. But you said somebody who wanted to do it for the most part without ego. I don't think Sanders wanted to run initially, so that's not him necessarily saying I'm taking this because. Yeah, that's true. But there are plenty of us like that. You know, he's he's he was in a unique position that he was already a part of the system, and um and we could recognize that. It, our little hearts leapt when we, he spoke. It was like, oh, that's, yeah. that's the guy. He's not in it for his ego. He's in it for, you know, to, to, for the highest interest. Right. Um, but he doesn't have to be the guy or the girl. It can be anyone like that. It's, it's that's the what I'm saying. Cool. We created that. This. That, that was all of us. So yeah. we can do that with anyone. Um, and, and I think we will find the person and we will elevate them and that will be that. Do you believe um, that's anybody in current politics? Well, I think um, in terms of moral ticker, I think Tulsi Gabbard has shown a lot of yeah. integrity. Um, particularly she, on war policy. Particularly on war policy, yeah. I mean, you know, she's not perfect or whatever, but she does know how to hold her shape like we were talking about before. You know, she yeah. knows how to, to be her whole self and not be swayed particularly when you see in the emails how much heat she was getting from the donors and stuff who, yeah. um, so she, so I, th I think she's kind of cool. I think Nina, Nina Turner's awesome. Um, love Nina. Love her. I love that yeah. woman. I had a conversation yeah. with her at the People's Summit. Um, oh, really? And I was kind of asking her, like, what the hell is going on with Sanders? Like, why is he doing that? And, you know, she kind of had this thing of, well, he thinks he can do it in the party. 
that was that was her thought. He feels that he can do this within the party. I said, okay, fair enough. <laughs> no, but she was earnest. Like she earnestly said, he earnestly believes it. He earnestly believes it. Right, now, that is good information. Said it one more time. Uh, that's good information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm. Oh man, I'm, I have to be honest. I'm skeptical. But there is a there is a strategy to it. If you want to, you know, if you want to think about it, there's a strategy. If you give, if you're being fair to him, if you're thinking from the standpoint of Sanders, like I want to run in 2020 because it's my turn. And in one of the articles they posted, Sanders kind of made this point, like he doesn't want Joe Biden to run in 2020. He doesn't want Joe Biden to take it. In which case, he himself may run to prevent Biden. He feels like he's the person who's who's earned it. If he's running in 2020, he takes it. I have to be honest. I think he takes it. Okay, I think you're yeah. going to have a lot of people who dislike Sanders right now. They dislike him, not because of who he is. They dislike him because they feel like he let him down. That's the difference in those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, um, it's not, I hate you for what, who you are. It's, I hate you for you not standing up in this particular way that I myself thought you should have stood up. Yeah. I think he would take it. But but I agree with you. It doesn't have to be Sanders. That, that vote for Turner in a heartbeat. I would right. vote for Gabbard. And, and and someone or, or someone in the Green Party or or an independent, I can see any of those things happening. Um, but I my my deep wish is the people decide. Whoever it is, it's the will of the people is heard this time because that was the most infuriating thing about the whole Sanders thing is that Sanders was the one that the people wanted. That's what and they wanted. They weren't That's allowed. Right. It was like no yeah. computer no. So yeah. Uh, Someone asks, do you find it odd that Counterpunch editors criticize you for collaborating with the right, but they are a left-wing publication that's a platform for right-wing authors frequently? This was on Aerial 88. Yeah, I do find that weird. That is that's weird. why I don't, I don't take their actual accusations all that seriously from them. I, I don't buy their thing. I don't buy it. You know, th yeah. There's a lot of posturing and stuff like that too in those articles. A lot of kind of old boys, Thai school, yeah. oh, buy the fax machine with old Cockburn, you know, good old days, oi, 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 sort of stuff. Like there was all this irrelevant stuff, particularly in Jeffrey Sinclair's piece that was, you know, about, oh, Alf, Afghanistan, remember that? What a good old war, blah, blah, blah. And I just <laughs> felt like it was like this is a club and they don't want me in it. You know, that, that's basically, yeah. It's always they, they a club. Yeah. It, like, it is. It's just people in their enclaves, man. People in their sandboxes. One thing I noticed about media is narratives. It, it took me a while to realize it. I didn't get it. When I was younger and I used to just watch, you know, TV and everything else. And when you stop watching it and you start looking at it again, you're like, oh, these guys are actors. These guys are putting out narratives. Somebody writes something. And right. you read it and, oh, this is the reality of what just took place. No, it's not. Somebody just wrote that. It's the difference in those things. It's somebody's perspective and narrative that people kind of get in their heads and they shape their worldview around. It's very weird. Um, bullshit man acts. How would you compare Aussie media to US media? Mm, that's oh. interesting. Right. That's interesting. Well, interestingly enough here, right? <laughs> and this is, you know, because we actually have a government media here, the ABC and mm -hmm. SBS, and then they have various kind of channels. Uh, they give, they have a charter, which means that they have to give a fair and balanced coverage to uh, both sides of politics, the left and the right, uh, and down to someone is actually there with a timer, timing the minutes. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, that's, oh, that's okay. a part of their thing. So, um, and what happens is that Whenever, whichever government's in it, they will accuse this this government-funded media of being biased against them. <laughs> always happens, and they're always trying to defund them and stuff like that because they're, they're, you know, in just giving enough time to each thing, then and and when you're in power, you're going to make mistakes and stuff. You're going to actually get a lot of. Uh, Coverage, you know, well, your coverage is going to be kind of equal. So uh, we have that, and that's actually quite important to um, 
to the dialogue. I think the dialogue's a lot more fair. I think they, there's a lot more variety of voices here um, and uh, including, you know, people from the, the kind of racist right as well yeah. to, to everywhere across. Um, we're a much more lefty country, though, than America. Like, our right-wing party is... Every country is more left <laughs> That's everywhere. America doesn't realize how right-wing it is. I don't right. think it well, does. I think it thinks it's is, is, is the Democrats, like, is the liberal equivalent. Yeah. So that, that's, our, that's our rightest wing. <laughs> so we, we go from the Democrats through a workers' party to the Greens... And, you know, um, and there are some kind of like outlying sort of Trumpy sort of uh, anti-establishment lunatics as well um, <clears throat> that and there's, a, but that we don't have any, very many at least, and evangelicals, that's not really a yep. thing here. Right. But anyway, the, when, yeah, the, the, the media is kind of seems more fair in my experience anyway. When Trump, yeah. Okay, that was that's fair. I, I'm trying to think of what it was like in the different countries for the media. Most of the countries I was in had some kind of state media, and we used to have um, what was it called a fairness doctrine. And yeah, I think it was called a fairness doctrine in this country, where yeah. the media had to be honest or had to very least be fair when it gave coverage to both sides. That went away. That went away. Now we have Fox News, we have MSNBC, we have CNN, each one yeah. giving a narrative, their own particular narrative. Um, oftentimes, none of those narratives are correct. It's yeah. it's goddamn shame. My mom, and this is a slight tangent. I had a conversation with my mom the other day. Yeah. And the only thing she could tell me was about Trump and Russia. Now, my mom watches my show. My mom hears me bitch about this stuff, and she knows a lot about stuff that most people would. And yet, because she watches mainstream news to some degree, she's like, "He has something to do with Russia. That son was colluding with Russia, and so forth." So you understand that the Russian hacking is different than Jared Krishna colluding. Okay, I get that, but certainly he boy shouldn't did. And as you're having the conversations, like, do you understand that many of the jobs that you're dealing with are going to be automated? That like most of these people are going to be out of work. Like you're you're trying to put it in real world terms in the sense of understand the things that are taking place in your world and your society. And we're having the conversation about Russia. That's all. It, it's yeah. this thing of um the the problem. Look, the problem with the U.S. media is that it never honestly engages our history. Like so. It would talk about doing wars elsewhere without any semblance that we killed a million people in Iraq. It would talk about Syria without any honest thing. Hey, we're sending terrorists over there to undermine the government. That's our yeah. media. That's all of our media. That's Fox, CNN, and MSNBC. None of those people talk about this stuff honestly. That's our media. That's our media. So when you're having conversations with people who just watch mainstream media, they're in the fucking closet. They have no clue. Well, and because we get... A lot of our media from us particularly around uh the foreign policy uh uh we actually just absorb those narratives as well like um my mom's much more suspicious <laughs> of the whole yeah. russian thing she she's she's like onto it she's like yeah they just want a war don't they they just want a war um, <laughs> some but, people do yeah some of us do some yeah us do. But, but in general, like we do absorb a lot of the kind of propaganda, the the, the liberal propaganda uh, here yes. into the narrative and stuff. Um, but yeah, because of these kind of those charters and things like that, there is kind of there's at least people try to to yeah. give all vantage points and let people make their own mind up rather than um, the CNN versus Fox. MSB, NBC, or whatever point of view, whereas they're just like, you must think this. This is the way yes. to think. Th these are all the thoughts you need to have. Don't have any other thoughts. You know, that's like. It's not shaped that way. Land. It's like there is some no. injection of real news into the news. Right, yeah. And I, I like, I think, like, we're grown up enough to know now that, like, I, I try and use facts and I try and verify everything. I try and primary source things when I can. Um, when And then I make a narrative out of that for me. Like, th and I say, this is the way I'm making sense of these facts. This is right. what I think is going on. Which is a much more truthful way of than this kind of, 
oh, disgusting, manipulative white guy sort of shit where they pretend that they're, they're just giving you the facts but they've omitted a whole heap of them um, yeah. and twisted everything else and then they, they lay it out in a kind of hard news format and people absorb it like it's the truth. But it's it's way more, well, just, you know, it's, it's just as biased as, as, some, as someone like me saying, well, this is what I see and this is what I reckon about it. No, um, it, you're, you're perfectly right. It, you made a point earlier about um, deep state. And like I said, I don't like the word because I think it mystifies things. But there is a point behind that, though. Media works for advertisement, meaning it's, it's doing it for dollars. It's not necessarily giving you news and information because it's advantageous to you. It's giving it because you're just putting asses in seats. It's like right. there's a fiscal motive. And the news right. that you're getting, think about that. Like the point of the news should be the news, not necessarily to make a profit off of it. Yeah. yeah. Somebody asked, they said, Fritz Carl, does Jamal know that Johnston wants to work with a guy who thinks that Jamal is a rapist? Um, I don't think she said that. <laughs> I do. Yes, Fritz, I do know that. I do know that. Yes, I do. Um, I'm, I'm okay with her thinking that because she never said that. Um, let's see. That, that's amazing. I'm amazed by how people take that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely amazed. Um, yeah, somebody says, our resistance, Stevie. Caitlin published, the American left sucks at collaboration. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, when I was in the, um, I went to the all three summits. I went to, what's the thing called? The, um, the leftist summit. No, the left forum, the people summit, and it was one more, the anti-war thing. At the people summit, you had like 20 different booths, all people who are leftists, all who probably agree with 99% of the same thing and all separate enclaves. And I thought to myself, why are all these people in different groups? <laughs> That's I kept thinking to myself, why are all these people in different groups? All of these people agree on the same goddamn thing. Why are these yeah. people in different groups? Um, I think, and how you do you know collaborate, what? man? How do you, put it this way, how do you hug a Nazi? I think that's what, that, that's the harsh way to put it. How do you get to the point where you say, okay, this guy has some disgusting views, but in this particular thing, yeah, if this guy says something, I'm okay with it. I Look, I, there, there are certain limits on that. So let's put caveats around it. There's certain people there's no way you're just going to work with. Right. Just to be very clear to anybody who's looking, you're not talking about hugging a Nazi. <laughs> you're talking about... Well, I'm not even talking about, like, I don't want to talk to Richard Spencer ever, ever in my life. I really hope that I never get... I Like, he... Those people are so tightly... Um, Velcroed to their belief system. There's no movement there. I don't. I don't feel arrogant enough to think that you know that they give a shit about like my little lefty views or or you know me adding to the conversation or anything like that. And their their worldview is so pernicious. You know, it is based in this like white nationalists, right? White nationalists believe that America should be a totally white nation. Yeah. Uh, that's that's fucking bizarre anyway for a start like that is really bizarre but of the, all the idiotic views that they have about this right and i think you'll appreciate this jamal is that not only is white culture dying but it's worth saving <laughs> like, yeah I, I know i've heard about this um this <laughs> argument that as the races kind of dilute that white culture is dying away look man there is nobody in this country that's pure anything it's well, just they, not. they just speak for white people. Good, good. White culture is dying. Good. Like, white colonialism is what has got us into this fucking mess as it is. You know, this pompous fucking white man's idea of it. Ho, ho, ho. I'll go off in a ship. Look at that country. That's mine now. Oh, it's, there are people here. Bang, bang, bang. I'll just take it over. Mine, 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 mine. And they've taken this philosophy, like, and spread it all over the world. That's basically what we're seeing in every area that, you know, this kind of white colonialism, I will take over your will and I will use your resources and everything that you have for my own indignment, you know? But you're not with, saying with, work with those guys. Like, I, I didn't take it as... Like you said, putting a t-shirt on him and hugging him. I, I, that's not the way I took that. I, I mean, 
I guess what I'm getting at is your your perspective had nothing to do with and I'm engaging this just for a moment because I, I kind of want to knock that down. Yeah. You're not talking about hugging a Nazi. It, ultimately, the woman made a very clear point. I don't know. Look, it seems childish to me. That's all. The, the argument for this seems somewhat childish to me. Somebody made a point that says, look, you need to work with the right or on the times where you can agree with the right. Work with the right. I have a bunch of Trump supporters on my page. A bunch. Right. Shocked the shit out of me. Shocked me. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I am further to the left than most. Why are they on my page? They were on my page because they were looking for somewhat of an honest opinion. That's it. That's it. So those Trump supporters, based on that philosophy, shouldn't work with me because I would make a point of saying all ownership or all land, for the most part, should be common heritage. Well, that's a pretty fucking leftist statement. Are you telling me that they're not supposed to work with me if they agree with me that we shouldn't be bombing these other countries? Hmm. Come on, man. I'm just saying this. I agree with you. On the things that you work with, you agree with, you should work with those people. I agree. Right. I just agree. I, I, I just don't. I don't understand the hupapaloo over that particular statement. That's all. That's all. Oh, well, I think it was because I, I did, you know, I'm a bit of an agent provocateur. And I did actually mention when I decided on Cernovich, like, and I'd been around the whole landscape and stuff, and I kind of lined them all up and stuff. And I was like, there's no fucking way over here and stuff. And there's this kind of small group here. And Cernovich is like the kind of the voice of that, you know, he's like the not all men, all lives matter kind of crowd, like, mm -hmm. I, who annoy the shit out of me, like, with their douchey <laughs> views. <laughs> but he's also pretty normal, like, he's also kind of like the, the kind of large percentage of white guys uh, yeah. uh, have these kind of poor me, poor little white guy me views. Um, well, they do. And I mean, they... But annoying. Yeah, they do. But he also, like... Yeah. Some do. It's like um, the world is against them. This this kind of weird um yeah. thing. But I always make this point that I have no power over that. Like, it's, it's, it's like I can't change the person's mind on any of that stuff. But what I can do is kind of deal with the economic issue. Because that guy will agree with me on economics. That guy may think I'm a rapist, whatever Fritz Carl said. That guy may think I absolutely a horrible person he may think i should go to hell and burn in hell for my views and yet when he goes to the voter rolls he's voting for the same person i want because we have the same economic interests that's yeah, the point. I think deeply people really beyond all the fear politics people just want a good life for them and their families they want a peaceful existence where they have enough bread on the table and a roof over their head and just to be allowed to thrive, you know, in their in their world. And that's all that anyone is ever asking for. Um, they just want to be alive. And just they just want to live a decent life. They just, just want to live a decent life. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, everything else on to, is on top of that. Everything else is, you know, like, it's this guy's fault, it's that guy's fault, it's because of this. Um, and that's that's the bullshit at the heart of it, and that's why I believe that you know that we're we're right about this is that we're we're offering a solution that actually does that that gives yes. everyone a good peaceful life where they can just look after their family without struggling and you know thrive. You know, I just want to see in like five ten years time a peaceful planet with a sustainable energies and um, people just because Agreed. that yeah people just want to live that's yeah, it. all our differences will fall away then because all our differences are based around the idea that we're trying to get to that and there's these other bastards in the way, you know. That's yes, not true. It's just here. We can just have it. It's all here for the taking. So let's it's just scarcity. take it. Yeah, this is scarcity. It's, it's, yeah. You created this game space where everybody is fighting just for their needs to be met. You have enough resources. You have the technology to supply everything to everybody else, and yet you still have a system where everyone is fighting for resources. Now, yeah. you create that fight for resources, then you have all these different groups in a particular country. Each particular group is identifying with other members of that particular group. That's a problem. That's a problem. Working together gets you what you want. And yeah, you're right. If people had what they needed for their lives, a lot of this stuff will fall away. When... um. During times of stress, if I'm not mistaken, during times of stress, the number of slaves that were killed went up. People were taking their economic frustrations out on in racial ways. 
The same thing right. happens in this country. It's like you put huge amount of economic stress on a country. You have a president, Democratic president, who says he's going to have hope and change. He gives 95% of the wealth to the top 1% of the country. Hope and change. That's our left. That's the Democrat. That's the guy who's supposed to be the lefty. Who comes in next? Donald Trump. And Donald Trump promises, I'm going to make America great again. I'm going to raise the minimum wage. I'm going to protect Social Security and Medicare. A Republican saying this stuff, I'm going to protect your jobs. I'm going to keep your jobs overseas. Donald Trump jumped from one place to the next doing these ridiculous campaign things of saying, hey, I'm fighting to keep these three jobs here. But guess what? For the first time in God knows how long America saw a president jumping around trying to save their jobs. Right. I think the guy is fucking horrible. I don't like him at all. I think he's a horrible person. He's a blue collar billionaire who's probably a crook. But that being said, it's like they completely detached the fact that Donald Trump took office based upon the last legacy. They completely missed that, that the economic stress that people are suffering pushes people into these weird enclaves of this um, identifying themselves. Like I'm having economic stress and I'm going to blame somebody else for that economic stress. Donald Trump comes in and says, hey, I know who to blame. You can blame that immigrant. You can blame that other person who's not doing it. America should be a great country if it wasn't for them. Right. It's, it's whether they realize it or not, the issue is class. The issue is not race. You can't change how people feel about you. What you can change about is your economic status. Your economic status is freedom. That's the I think, yeah, changing the economic status changes a whole lot of things. Um, you know, I my... It's interesting, Nelson Mandela, you know, in his little prison island in Robben Island, yeah. one of the things I was reading about this, one of the first things they did as soon as they, um, uh, a prisoner came into this, you know, so they're all prisoners <laughs> um, and all for, you know, for no reason whatsoever. Um, the first thing they did was put them in one of four groups um, and it was a hierarchy of, like, of privileges and so that you know some people got very little food and were starving all the time up to the fourth group who were eating well and doing okay and so the idea then is you just get people fighting each other because it's unfair and you you know yeah. you to be sitting next to starving hungry sitting next to someone who's well fed feels fucking unfair and it others each other like we other each other that way and we we try and blame each other but they didn't let nobody it blames the system. No like, one blames the system. Nobody looks at the system. It's, it's actually the system is invisible. They just don't look at it. It's amazing. The amazing, the miracle thing that happened there, and Nelson Mandela, I think, was the kind of spiritual leader of this, is that they wouldn't let that ununify them. They did not let those privileged system. Everyone was. They treated each other the same, and they kept reminding each other that we're all the same. We're all. <laughs> it's not. It's, we're not the problem. The the fact that we're in prison is the problem, and the fact that we're in prison, you know, for for our um, beliefs is the problem. And that's with with that strength from within there, and you know, with help from without then it busted the whole thing open. So uh, that's, you know, the only medicine for divide and conquer is to unite, even when then they don't sound like you, you don't like what they think about certain things or whatever, they don't look like you. We've just got to find uh, points of intersection, you know, where... Um, we meet. Like, where, yeah, where we meet, you know, like if, you know, I'm a mother, so I can I can intersect with with other mothers no matter what. Or like, there's there's always ways that you can kind of uh, undo the tribalism um, that separates us by just kind of uh, like greeting each other, you know, with a nod to the things that we have in common. Yeah. No, I agree on that part. Just put it down and just you know be a human and say, well, I'm flawed and I'm just trying my best and let's let's. Let's see what you, you're seeing in this big picture and I'll tell you what I'm seeing and we'll probably disagree, but that's okay. Um, and let's get on with the things that we do agree, collaborate on the things we do agree. Oh, somebody put a really good point. Uh, the guy's name is, oh, Anero88. Fred Hampton, Black Panther, said, if a white man wants to lynch me, that's his problem. But if he has the power to lynch me, that's my problem. Economic justice would change that. Yeah, economics. I keep making the point, economics. But, because look, you can't, if you're talking about a free society, like honestly, if you're talking about a society where you can be left to your own devices, which is the society I want, leave me to my devices. Let's make sure each person has what they need to live a particular life and leave us to our own devices. 
But that means I am also leaving you to your devices to feel how you want to feel about stuff. You can hate my guts. I don't care. That's what right. I mean, well, honestly, that's what it like, why would anyone hate your guts when, when they've got all that they need to, to survive and thrive? You know? Yeah. It's, it takes away a lot of problems when you're not just in survival mode all the time. And Yes, yes. Like, you, you're not looking anywhere else to blame because you're happy. You've got enough. So, yeah. I, apparently, my wife is saying, answer bullshit, man. It says, so you got shit for mentioning Chernovich. So who do you actually recommend where you get your news and perspectives from? That's a good question. Oh, all over the place. Um, Consortium News is great. I love, um, I lo you know Consortium what, I love. Consortium came out with a piece today talking about the hacking thing, um, saying that it was most likely a leak. Yes, yeah, they're, they're really fantastic. Robert Perry uh, leads them up and um, they're really good. Um, I do love Counterpunch. They give a good platform to-, to Counterpunch is good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't, you know, I, I, I think we've all got to become critical readers and sometimes information can come from bizarre places, but if you can verify that and make sure that it's from a primary source and that it's not being, uh, you know, manipulated in any way, then, then you, you can take that on into your narrative, even if it's say from Fox news or whatever, um, yeah. the, the, uh, the importance is not to put place all your trust in the outlet, you know? Yeah. That's when I see people say, oh, that's not a reliable source or whatever, they're actually talking about the outlet. Now, yeah. outlets can be, uh, can put out reliable information and they can put out very dodgy information in the same day. So yeah. I, I think we need to go it one deeper and find out what they're talking about cross-reference and, and you know turns this all into citizen journalists that's the thing cross-reference yes. work out where because the they weren't doing their job jimmy door makes this point um he says that's why people get their news from youtube <laughs> <He> <laughs> yeah because yeah. 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 it's more honest and because um people you know don't have an agenda of they're not they, they don't have a boss overlooking them or whatever they're just trying to say their story as it is what's going mm -hmm. on there yeah, I agree. I totally agree. All right. This is, let me see. Do we have any more questions? Um, all right. No, no. It, so, is it, oh, our resistance TV, he made the point of um, Truth Dig. Truth Dig is good. Um, Robert, Robert Shear. Robert Shear. Yeah. Robert Shear is a good guy. I like him. I really like him. Yeah. Real News Network is also pretty good. Um, what's his name? Paul J. Yeah, Paul J. I actually met him again at People Summit. Um, so no, and you're right. All of us have become citizen journalists. So do you think this is a good thing? Kind of the rise of the quote unquote citizen journalists, this kind of thing of um Yeah. I think it's great. Thing trying to take over mainstream media of sorts. Oh, I, I think it's fantastic. I really this is, you know, this is what I hope to do as a journalist. When I was doing my degree, this is what I wanted to do. And I wanted I want everyone to do it. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm, you know, I, I think it's so important that we um, t take like away the narrative from money and yes. start just trying to make sense of our world uh, through the kind of perspective of individuals uh, and the information that we have at hand. It's so important. I think it's so healthy. I think it's kind of like it is, uh, you know, the will of the people being returned to them um as much as elections are you know when when the when people are starting to be able to make sense of their world as it actually is as humans want to see it rather than as the, the powers that be that want to manipulate to see it then yeah i think it's fantastic and i really love this i love it too it, you know it's funny I, I was on hard bastards um hard he has hard news network he has a radio show and right. on the radio show he one of the callers, um, he said, how can you like Bernie Sanders? That guy's a socialist. And, I, you know, it's, I kind of had the conversation with the guy. And Carbass was like, yes, I love these conversations. I want these people to disagree. I want these people to bump heads. Your yeah. article, I, I love your article. I would have to be honest. The more I've had this conversation, the more I begin to love this article. Initially, it annoyed me. I got <laughs> Not the article itself, just the, the kick up over it. I thought people were being childish in the way they were looking at the article or the way they were reading it. It was so anti-intellectual like it, it 
it was completely regressive in the way that the article was being read and not necessarily the content of what was being read. It was, like, oh, I don't like the way she said that she used that guy's word. I'm, I don't like that. that. That bothers me. That hurts my feelings that she used this guy. Get over it. But I like that because at this point, it kind of kicks up a certain amount of dust that people need to kind of even bump heads over. This thing of, um, right. Yeah. Know, the regressive left doesn't necessarily carry the conversation. I think that that's the point. Or at the very least, the conversation needs to be had. Um, so, yeah, I like it. I like it. I, 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 yeah, like it. exactly. I think we need to have these conversations. You know, when this first came out, especially through Counterpunch and whatever, and I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to be drawn into this, like, this thing that I know I didn't mean. Like, yeah. the, the, you know, it's being told, oh, doesn't it annoy you when someone says you're saying this thing and you're not saying that thing and you know and you're not saying that thing yeah yeah, yeah you misrepresent just, it it's aggravating i mean I, oh, it's, I it's like it. somebody says one thing and you're like that's that's not what i said that's not even close to what i said there's no way you can read that to figure out that's what i said and yet it's blown up to be you know something else something else yeah and that's why you know like they can they can continue to do i just made this cho choice actually that you know, they've they've got this imaginary me that they've created that has nothing to do with what I said or what I believe or what I think. So I can kind of leave the room. They they can keep bashing up that thing, but I don't need to be there. I'm free to go. <laughs> so yeah. here's the thing. Everybody, um nobody knows anybody else, if we if we're being real honest. I mean, you, you have a perspective yeah. of people, you create an image of people in your head. That's just the image of that person in your head. Yeah. Oh, you have to have to be, if you're being fair, if you're being someone empathetic, meaning you as a person just fuck up in general. People just are. You got to give people the benefit of the doubt. Also, also, like even the image in your head of that individual, you kind of have to be somewhat ambiguous with it. No, full well that there's no way you can know who that person actually is. Mm. If you can read the content of that, if you can have multiple ideas of what it means, I, I make the point that it's a massive jump of the shark to find an interpretation of that article that goes anywhere near where they were going with that. that that's all I'm going to say. Somebody says, what about the infighting on the left? They said, um, what do you think about this infighting on the left in media, like the left media? Because there were a few kick-ups. I think oh, yeah. um, Tim Black put on Sam Stein, they had a kick-up. I know Jimmy Dore and Sam Stein, C C I'm sorry, Sam Cedar were having a kick-up. Um, right. H.A. and Young Turks. What's with this infighting in the lefty media? Oh, you and Counterpunch? <laughs> you guys are going at it. Right. Well, I just, uh, I, I think it's so, such a waste of energy to, to me anyway. Like, you know, the Cernovich thing, in the end I was like, all right, I'm glad to talk about this. Let's just talk about this and let's make this a part of the conversation. It's clearly something that people want to talk about. Let's not avoid it or whatever. But um, destroying each other over it. You know, actual. These are my people, <laughs> yeah. and that they they they're trying to kick me out. And I think I'm kind of like useful. I, I don't I don't <laughs> I think they probably do well to keep me in the crew. I and that's not my call. But I actually think that I'm doing something useful. And you're doing something I, amazing, and useful. I would not be talking <laughs> to you if you weren't. Well, thank you. But like you know, I just. I don't know why they want to kill me over it. Like, just stone dead, get her out, blah, 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 blah. And that's the infighting I find um, just, it, it's exhausting. It's very um, tanking of your creative energy. I found it very difficult to keep working while it's happening because although I know that they're yelling at something I didn't say, like, they're also, I know that that, smear to my reputation is going to dog me for years. You know, this is going to go on for years. In five, ten years' time, people are going to say she's a white supremacist. <laughs> Be like, oh, my God! Like, you know, it won't matter. That, that Because you can be in it and you can see see what the machinations are but most people are just hearing the the twitterings from the outside and stuff and they're like oh yeah Caitlin Joseph she, she's a white nationalist now that's you know that's weird <laughs> and then they go, get on and they said that is fact and I just think I'm that I'm amazed by that I'm like I would that. just I'm, like you're right I'm amazed that people do that but you're right you're right right I just 
yeah, I, I hope that what I'm doing for us and our movement, that people would uh, want to protect that a bit more rather than kill it. Like, if they're really in this to win it, then I think I'm a team player. And I think you, I think, I think just killing me and knocking me out of the the thing is very. Thing. Nobody is look. Nobody is knocking you out of anything. No, nope. nobody has authority to do that. I, look, I have oftentimes I come across and say I'm being God's arbiter. I'm joking when I'm saying that. I'm just saying that from this kind of um taking an objective perspective, kind of looking down on the events that take place. Nobody's kicking you out of anything. You, you didn't do anything wrong. You did what you did. <laughs> I, I think I made the point to you before. Ignore that. Ignore that. Anything you do. I, I, I Look, Martin Luther King, when he came out against the Vietnam War, part of his reason for coming out against the Vietnam War, because he realized that the murdering people abroad also has something to do with the oppression of people in the United States. If you're spending all of this money killing people abroad, that's money you don't necessarily have to deal with the things in your own country. Now, the people bashed him for that. Understand, he's coming out saying, hey, we need to stop murdering people abroad. We need to stop killing those people in Vietnam. His own people bashed him. It was like, hey, hey, stop talking about those people over there and deal with this black issue here in the United States. Right. I realize that any position that you take, you're going to get attacked. Even right. taking an anti-war position is yeah. a position that somebody's going to dislike. There's no win. There's no reason to be upset about it. Some random person that may or may not exist outside of the ether is upset about something. That is true. That's true. And if, it, if we're going to actually move the narrative forward, we're going to encounter a lot of resistance because yeah. moving something requires, you know, you just stop the inertia and actually create movement around you. So that is totally true. Thank you. Let me ask you this part. And this is something I noticed too. And it's something I had to learn and I was doing my um, videos. Fake support. So in situations where somebody, I, I get an example, I would have Trump supporters who would say, yes, 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 I agree with this part that you said. I agree when you're bashing the Democrats. Mm. And you turn around and you make a point about Trump is saying, this guy's a crook. And he's like, mm. hey, hey, you shouldn't be talking about Donald Trump in that way. It's like, <laughs> but I just showed you all this evidence for the Democrat thing. You agreed. I showed you the same amount of evidence for the Trump thing. And now you're saying, oh, my God, you're being, how do you, I mean, Come on. Everybody that you work with on the right is not necessarily going to be an honest arbiter. That's fair, right? That's totally 100% fair. And every time I, I write, oh, my God, every time I write something that, you know, like is uh, pro-socialized medicine or whatever, um, yeah. they, they go crazy. And um, and then I go block, 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 block. Because <laughs> I'm only really interested <laughs> in people who are woke enough to see the whole evil thing, you know? I, I'm, yeah. I think there's enough of us now to kind of like um, to, to see that, you know, like <laughs> beyond the partisan politics, beyond the tribalism, there's a yeah. lot of shit going on and we, sh yes. we need... Yes. We no, need I'm to sorry. I'm saying yes, but I, I didn't mean it to stop. I'm just agreeing with you. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. No, yeah. Um, yeah, that that um that if you just keep talking truth, that's going to annoy people all the time, and that's true. And I have, I drop whole swathes of my audience every time I, um, because you'll get on a little track and stuff, and you'll be saying things that are like really really lefty, and then all the lefties come and join you, and then you say something you know like that is um like uh, anti Hillary or whatever, and then they just grow crazy, and then um then you. Because they just go away. So I gotta be honest. I have a sick love of anti of Hillary supporters. I have to be honest. I have that? a sick love of it. I have a very sick love of it because it's like um, it's so pathetic. It's so pathetic. You cheated my candidate, and after you cheated my candidate, your guy lost a reality show host. That, oh, <laughs> it's like we told you she was gonna lose, and she lost. We told you, we told you, and she lost. So yes, I get somewhat of a sick thrill. Um, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it is I, when Trump won that election, I, I I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe he won. It was shocking that Trump won to some degree. I could not figure out how he won on the election thing. I had a bet with a guy at work, and he he was like, Hillary Clinton is going to get 300 and some votes. I said, dude, let's make a map. Let's make a map, each state. And he chose the states. I chose my states, and I couldn't figure out how Hillary Clinton would win. And yet I still thought, she got to win. Couldn't figure out how she'd win, and she lost. 
she lost. And it still felt like for two or three days, like, holy shit. Oh, <laughs> the, whole the, the whole world stopped. Like, yeah. here in Australia, everyone was like, whoa, what just yeah. happened? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck happened to America? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, like, because it was just, we were all prepared for Hillary and everything, and it was all going that way, all going that way, all, and it just was like, like the world had reversed and suddenly the, the sun was coming up in the west in the morning. It, it was, there was shockwaves across the world. Here's, here's um, the thing, though. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. I was, Julian Assange said it best when he said, well, it's different. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> the funny part is the polls. You know, Huffington Post was like, Hillary Clinton is going to win this race by 98%. Every other poll that was being objective, though, Donald Trump was right there. Everything that happened, the grab him by the pussy video would come out. And within like a few days, he's like two points behind her. She couldn't shake him, regardless of what came out about Trump, regardless of what he said, regardless of what he did. She sh could not shake him. Well, he did it was amazing. Thing where he said, I think he bragged that he could go out in the streets of New York and shoot someone and he'd still be president. He did. And he it did. was. You would have 20% of this country who would still be okay with it. Yeah. So it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting is word for it. It's a, it's a curse and a blessing, you know. Uh, it's a curse and, and a blessing because it's an opportunity. Whether lefties realize it or not, it's like people are having this particular conversation. This is minutia. The conversation you want to have is what the hell is going to happen in 2020? You have the weakest version of the Democratic Party that you've ever had. And you're going to have somewhat of a civil war in regards to who's going to take the soul of the party and what the party is going to be. Progressives should be organized. They should oh, be organized. We, yeah, we, I mean, we it, it, this, Yeah, this minutia and everything else. Yes, I get it. There should be a certain level of organization that's going and trying to get those people in those positions. The question is, how do you do it? Having a conversation about some random guy is not it. It's not mm -hmm. it. That's all I'm saying. Um, and you're a great part of that conversation. So. Thank you, Mel. You are too. Thank you so much for having me on. I absolutely appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on. Guys, I want to thank Caitlin Johnson again. Once again, thank you for, for coming on. No worries. <laughs> Very cool. All right, guys, I am going to end it here. Um, thanks for joining us. I, I, hope it was, I hope it was interesting. I hope it was a good discussion. Um, I think you guys got to, to hear. <laughs> I got to be honest. I didn't want to talk about the other thing as much as we did only because I thought it was somewhat of a minutiae, but I'm kind of glad we did talk about it. And I hope all the guys questions were answered. So thanks guys. You have a good one. Thanks again, Caitlin. No worries, Jamal. Thank you. Bye-bye.